Marshall, that was your song, Old Girl. That's right. Back in the spring of 1972. Yeah. Do you remember that? You do, I do. <laughs> I know you the do. the biggest record we ever had. It was. That was the number one song number back one. in the spring of 1972. Now, Marshall's going to take us back. That was the Shy Lights. That was their biggest hit, Old Girl from 1972. And that group, the Shy Lights, was originated. It was formed and it was developed by the legend sitting next to me, Marshall Thompson from Chicago. Marshall, you know, in talking about the Shy Lights history, I know you guys just didn't drop out of the sky and become the Shy Lights. It took you a long time to evolve your sound. Way back from, from high school, you were standing out in the corner singing with your buddies. Right. Did you have a group back then, back yeah, in high school? Well, well, we always wanted to sing, you know, and I was a drummer too, but, you know, at the same time. But um, back in the days, uh, we used to like all of the groups from different schools all over Chicago. And what school were you in? Well, I was at uh, Shakespeare Grammar School when I first started. Then I left Shakespeare when I graduated from Shakespeare in 1958. I went straight on to High Park High School. And when, when I got to High Park High School, I met Brother Squirrel and Brother Red. <laughs> now, now, tell me, Brother Red, that's Credell Jones. That's Credell Jones. And when you say Brother Squirrel, we're talking about Robert Lester. That's right. right. Now, I asked him once, I said, I said, you're a pretty cool looking guy. <laughs> I said, why do they call you Squirrel? You don't look like a squirrel. Right. And he told me, that's, right. that's because I can climb a, the, a tree. You need to crack nuts. That's, <laughs> that's the way they call him a squirrel. Yeah. yeah. So he, 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 lived, he lived with back, back where he was born in Mississippi. Right. Yeah. That's right. So he lived with that nickname his entire life. Right, that's right. Yeah. We kept we kept him with that name in sight with us. Yeah. Everywhere we go. You did. We called him Pretty Boy Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Because he was a good looking guy. Right. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. You bring in Squirrel, you bring in Red. So the group then consists of the three of you? If, at one time? No, but what happened is out of the Desert Arrows, that's where it really started. The Desert Arrows was uh, myself, Creedell Jones, and uh, Eddie Sullivan. Okay, but that's back in the day, and the Dale Brown. And uh, that group broke up. See, it was two of us left uh, my group, and two of them left Squirrels, the other group that he had. What was the name and of Sean, Squirrels' group? Sean Tours. In, in that group? Squirrel? Anybody else? Squirrel? Group? It was Squirrel and Eugene. Eugene. Now, who is Sean Eugene? Tours. Well, that's the songwriter and lead singer. <laughs> okay, he became the songwriter and lead singer for right. the Shy Lights. That's right. Right. Now, before you brought them in the group, though, you were the highlights. That's right. Your music back in 1964. You guys sounded good. <laughs> you sounded like the Drifters. All right, a lot of people said we sounded like. What were you singing back then? Well, we did a song that sounded like the Drifters, uh, You Changed Our Love, and it was uh, You Did That To Me. Now, I like that song. You did that you to me. Admit, that was one of the first ones we did. I like and, that. Uh, I like we, that beat. It had a little Latin beat, huh? Well, like we were searching for a sound. Sure. We didn't have a sound, but we loved the Drifters, you know. And Everybody did. Yeah, we got to get to, got to be real close friends of the Drifters. Oh yeah. yeah we or Charlie the, Thomas, Charlie Benny, Thomas. Rudy, yeah, Lu yeah. Rudy Lewis, all of them. Benny huh? King and all them guys. Yeah. Man, they, man, Rudy Lewis is that guy, man. He can sing. Oh, yeah. up on the roof. Yeah. Up on the roof. That's, that's, oh yeah. You sure know everybody. <laughs> I did. I've been so lucky to have met so many of these people wow. over the last several decades. You studied. You studied your history. Huh? We've talked many times over the years, and I've told you before. I've known you for 45 years. Wow. Your music has been with me everywhere we went. We had little transistors, and then as music evolved, we took the shy light. In the Army, we were singing shy lights every day, every weekend. We, we had to. It was just great music, stylistics, spinners, all this great music. Certainly. Well, we had it, we had it together, and, we, and that's where we got our sound from, too, listening to those different groups, you know, like the Dales and the other Rollins and Spaniards. And, the Harvey and the Moon Glows, you know, the, those are our groups that we love. And the Flamingos now, with Sally McGillroy, you know. He, Sally McGillroy used to sing with us on Time to Time. And he went to, uh, the, uh, Sally went to, uh, the, he was with the Flamingos. He left there, he came and sung with us for a little while. You know. There was a lot of this trading back and forth when guys needed help, other guys would help out in the background right. and, and sing. Right. And, and as we talked earlier, even well, we're going to talk about the Summer of Love in a few seconds because uh -huh. you guys were contributing to some of those songs from 1967. Well, That's well, first of all, in what, 66, you had a song that sounded so much like the Coasters, talking about 
Ain't you glad the winter's yeah. over? Ain't you glad, baby, the snow starts The snow's gone. gone. <laughs> yeah. The winter comes tumbling down. And you sounded like the coasters on that. And you were sounding like the impressions in another time. Yeah, we did a song called I'm So Jealous. Just like the impressions. Jerry Butler and, mm -hmm. and Curtis Mayfield and uh, Sam Gooden and Fred Cash. I right. mean, I'm sure these guys are all your great all friends. All our friends. Oh, all yeah. All our friends. Yeah, they're all very close. Mm -hmm. And then in 1967, during the Summer of Love, you had a song called The Price of Love. Price of Love. That was the audition song. That's the one we Audition. Carl David. When you say audition, we're talking about now you're the shy lights. Because you started out as the highlights, right. but there was another group with the same name, right? Carl Davis. Well, Carl Davis was president of uh, uh, one group at the time, and, and he had Decar Records at the time. And uh, we had now Brunswick, Jackie Wilson. Right. In the summer of love, you guys, you started out as the highlights, right? But there was another group, and the names conflicted. Yeah, we went over to Mercury, Mercury Records, and. Uh, uh, they wanted us to come in and bring that price of love uh, over there when we had talked. And uh, they said, well, listen, we got another group over here called the Highlights. So what you all have to do, you have to think of another name. So we thought of Marshall and the Shy, the Marshall and the Shy Lights then. Put the C in front of the H and made it Marshall and the Shy Lights. Well, you're from Chicago. It right, fit. Right. And then... At, later on, as the hits, big hits started coming, I t took my name off the front sure. and just made it simple as the shot light. This isn't Diana Ross and the Springs no, or... Right. Yeah, just make know. it simple as the shot light. It's, it's all the same. That's anyway, right. The shot and lights and the shot light. Mm -hmm. Good. So, that was your audition record. And then, what, what did you have after that in 1968? You had, uh, well, you had another hit. The first chart, the first chart hit you had in 68. Oh. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, what you do to me? What? Um, but in '68, you guys made the charts for the first time, and Eugene is singing lead. Right. And then you guys seem to have found your sound. Mm -hmm. So you put everything together. Put everything together. And sound. But Eugene is also writing. He was dating a young lady named Barbara Acklin, <laughs> and Barbara had a song, she had a couple of hits. One was, Am I the Same Girl? Right. Which became... Soulful Strut. Soulful Strut. Mm -hmm. Written by? Yeah, written by Eugene Record. By Eugene Record. <laughs> Eugene wrote that. Right. Now, Barbara had a, a hit song called, Love Makes a Woman. Right. On Brunswick. Right. Love Makes a Woman was written by Eugene Record. There <laughs> you go and again. He, and he called me in there <laughs> and then got Squirrel and Red together. And we went in there and sung the background. And that's you, the Shylights, right. Marshall singing background. Right. Now, in 67, Jackie Wilson sang one of the greatest rock and roll songs of all time. Because mm -hmm. that was the summer of love. Smokey had more love. We had Brown Eyed Girl from uh, Van Morrison. That's right. The Temptations. You're my everything. Okay, and another... Uh, Roger Penzabine. Another and, big one. And, yeah, big, big, big hit by Roger uh, Penzabine and Norman Whitfield. And you guys had your Price of Love mm -hmm. in that summer, and uh, Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher. Squirrel sang background on that. Well, the whole Shawnee group sang. Oh, the whole group sang? Right, that's the whole group. Oh, I did. Wait a minute. Let me. Uh, see. Uh, I didn't uh, know that. The whole group is singing. Whole, that's the whole group. The whole Shawnee group. Fantastic. Yeah. Now I gotta listen to that song again and again. Because I gotta I'm gonna hear and Barbara singing. And Barbara singing, yeah. So I'm gonna hear Eugene. I'm gonna hear Red Jones. Right. I'm gonna hear Marshall Thompson right. and Squirrel. That's what you hear. Oh, okay. I'll listen and, to that song. And Barbara Ackles. And Barbara Ackles. We're getting, I'm gonna forget about Barbara. <laughs> so Soulful Strut then. Young Holt Unlimited. Yeah, Young Holt Trio too unlimited. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Soulful Strut. Yeah, they now they left Ramsey Lewis. Right. How did they get Eugene's song? Well, what happened is they was in the studio. They happened to be in the studio at that time, and and uh, where was the studio? But we was at uh, on Walden Street in Chicago, Universal Studio, Universal Studio on Walden in Chicago, mm -hmm. on the second floor, right there on Walden. Now they they recorded for everybody. Right. Universal. That's where I introduced the Jackson Five in the studio with Bruce Sedin. Now wait a minute. The, one of the Shylights, the leader of the Shylights, Marshall Thompson. 
Marshall asked me to go and look at this kid that was on stage at the time I walked in. And I went up there and that was this little bitty guy about like that. And he was spinning around like James Brown. Ooh, hey, ooh. You, you introduced Jackson 5. Yeah, I put him to Bruce Sedin. You know, Michael and them used to come down to our sessions. They listened to him and Joe and then watch our, listen to our session. So I told him, uh, uh, Michael said, man, I love that engineer we had, Bruce Sedin. So he, that's how he met Bruce Sedin. Michael, just a little kid. That's right. He loved the sound. He loved the sound that we was doing coldest day of my life or something like that. You are thinking, what are these young kids doing hanging around? I mean, right. I got work to do. Right. But then what did you say? Oh, I told uh, Joe, I think I really met Joe down there. We did a song that Bobby Taylor used to sing. Who is Bobby Taylor? Bobby Taylor and the Super Vancouver's. Bobby Taylor and the Vancouver's, they were up from from Northwest United States. That's right. And Tommy Chong. Yeah. And they had a big hit. What was their big hit in 68? Does your mama know about it? So Bobby Taylor is at Motown. Mm -hmm. You're not at Motown. You're working with, um, you're working with Curtis Mayfield. You're working at Brunswick. Jerry Butler. Jerry Butler, The Impressions. Mm -hmm. How does Bobby Taylor get to meet you? And how do you introduce the Jackson 5 to Bobby Taylor? Well, what happened is uh, Bobby come out with a smash hit before us, and he was headlining the show at the Rigo Theater. So the Shine Lights was co-starring with Bobby Taylor. But I had been running the Jackson Five all over to Chicago, playing them little group, them little uh, clubs. You were taking them around to I the little them in the club. Really, the, the little club. kids. He sang and run them out the back door. Oh wow! Oh, so, so one day, uh, Purvis Span, the blues man, it's got, he loved that group. Okay. And he said, let's bring them in. They came in on the day of one of the talent show in Chicago. So whoever wins the talent show get a chance to play on the big show at the Regal Theater. So they won the talent show, so they end up on the big show opening up for us at, at the Regal Theater. So they were on the same show with you. Right. They opened up for me. Opened up. And um, well, what do they call themselves then? The Jackson Five. They call themselves Jackson the Five. Jackson Five. Five little kids at that time. Right. And I spoke, when I spoke at the burial with Michael Schmiel, I told the whole story, what we're talking about now. I said, it was some, I said it was amazing how I had the Jackson open up for us, Michael Jackson. And then six months later, we were, they, we were opening up for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. I said that at the burial with, with the family, you know. Yeah. It was really, really something. Yeah, Bobby, we, we, had, we had concert tonight, and I got a call, phone call from, uh, some of the family members, and they told me that Bobby yeah, had passed. Bobby died today. Right, he yeah. died today. Yeah. Now, Bobby called me a couple times. He wanted me to come to interview him. He said he wouldn't come back to the United States. He didn't want to come back because he didn't like the way he was treated by Motown, and he said he deserved much better than what he got, but he wanted me to come there, and he wanted me to sit in front of the camera like you and I are doing now and tell his story, and you know, we always say, well, we're going to do it sometime. We'll do it. We never got around to it. Now always, you're telling me, always. yeah. What he did, he called me. He said, Marshall, do them people know that you introduced me to Michael Jackson? And he said, well, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell these people on the radio. So he called V103, Herb Kent, the top DJ, just passed away. Yeah. And told him, he said, let me tell you, i got to get the truth out of this. Uh, he told Herb, he said, listen, Marshall, that used to play the Jacksons around the little clubs as his friend. And um, we were playing at the Rico Theater. We was upstairs on the third floor, Michael Jackson and all of us up on the third floor. Bobby Taylor come up there to see me to ask who was that little group on stage. So Bobby ran down the step, breaking his neck to get down the step to see him. And he seen Michael Jackson and them singing, tearing the place up. We couldn't believe little kids. Tan the grown up, they going crazy. And now he was explaining this recently, right? Oh yeah, he did. can we hear that now? Let's, yes, let's you hear can. that. You can. And it was at the Regal Theater. The, one of the shy lights, the leader of the shy lights, Marshall Thompson. Marshall asked me to go and look at this kid that was on stage at the time I walked in, and I went up there, and that was this little bitty guy about like that, and he was 
spinning around like James Brown. Ooh, hey, ooh. I said, dang. I said, send him up to the, to the dressing room. I asked him at the end, well, how'd you like to go to Motown? He said, you don't mean it. What do you mean? He said, well, I said, okay, tell you what. You want to go with Motown? I said, I'll take you there and I'll get you signed. And that's how it started. So that was Bobby out talking about uh, how it really happened because we always get this story about Diana Ross discovering the Jackson 5. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Well, I think what happened is we couldn't say that my, I discovered them at the time because, well, we wasn't really known. Some real promotion, the best thing you would, when you're going to promote somebody, I would use John Ross myself because yeah. she was huge. Or Elvis. You know, she, <laughs> took them, she put him on the Eddie Sullivan show. Yeah. You know, I didn't take him on the Eddie Sullivan show. I took him on 43rd Street show. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Chicago. Yeah. You know, so, but. But it worked. Was, she was it the worked. Giant, she was a giant, and it worked for him. And yeah. I was very happy for him to yeah. be there. Mm -hmm. But actually, the truth is that you brought the Jackson 5 to, to Bobby, Bobby Taylor, Taylor, and Bobby oh, Taylor took him to Motown. He took him to Motown straight to Barry Gordy. But this is the late '60s, and, and you're still, you're still looking to get your sound, and you finally mm -hmm. develop that sound, that's going to knock the music world on its butt. Right. Okay. And how did that evolve? Well, what happened is we, we had got a deal with Brundrick Records. Carl signed us up with Brundrick, and when when we had the deal there, we met up, went up to New York to meet with Nat Turnbull which is the president of Brunswick. See. He'd been with him for a long time. Yeah, As a matter of fact, he was the one that turned down the Miracles. That's right. That's right. When the Miracles came, tried to get on with Brunswick and, and, and Jackie Wilson, and, right. and, and, and that's when Barry Gordy took him over. That's correct. But it was Nat Townapole that said, that's no, thank you. <laughs> well, see, when we got up there, uh, Tommy Vistola, which is people up there at Brunswick, he asked me, he said, Marshall, would you like to be on the Flip Wilson show? And I thought you was nuts. I said, what you mean be on the Flip Wilson show? What? How are we going to be on Flip Wilson show? He said, I'm going to have you on there. He says, it's about three weeks, you're going on Flip Wilson, the number one yeah. TV show in the United States, period. I thought he was crazy. And so we, we had just cut Have You Seen Him for Brunswick. And so he said, so Carl said, hey, you going on that? You going on Flip Wilson? So this is 1971. That's the 71, 70, going into 71. Yes, this is Paul, October 71. That's right. So Carl says, take with you, old girl. They say, Carl, <laughs> we haven't even finished the song yet. We don't have strings on there and all that. We only have the rhythm. <clears throat> he said, trust me, take it with you. We took old girl with us. And then uh, after we got off Flip Wilson show, we went back to the hotel. Phones was ringing like crazy all over the country. What did you sing on Flip Wilson? We did Have You Seen an Old Girl. You did them both? <clears throat> we did both of the songs. When we got back to the hotel, Carl was getting calls like crazy, you know, about us taping, just doing taping. We weren't even on the air yet. Now, it was now when you sang on Flip Wilson, Have You Seen Her was released. Already. Old girl wasn't even wasn't cut. It, wasn't even cut. We just only had the rhythm set. When we cut it, but we wasn't finished yeah. with it. So, uh, so uh, we got back to Carl say, man, you know what? We released an old girl. And three weeks later, we came on at number one. They didn't even climb the charts. They didn't even go up to number 50. You know, like have you seen, they came up the charts, direct to number one. But old girl didn't do nothing but come on at number one across the board. I say, well, he said, I told you. And I told Carl, Carl, you know I didn't like that song. He said, you like it now? Because <laughs> I feel that at the time I was looking for strictly R&B, R&B. And that was a crossover. That, that record just went crazy. I don't know. I mean, everybody started. Country Western, Con Huntley, everybody started singing. But see, one of the problems with that when you start looking at the numbers, mm -hmm. it went to number one so fast and everybody bought it that week. They weren't buying it the next week because they already bought it. Right. So it didn't stay at number one along uh -huh. because it shot up there Straight so quickly and it, and it sold one. so fast. Mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget when I first heard that. I was in the Army. I'm listening to that song, 
hearing it in the morning on the radio before we went to our duty. And uh, what is this? Oh, girl. <laughs> when I first heard Have You Seen Her, mm -hmm. I was in the Army. I was in boot camp and advanced individual training at Fort Polk, Louisiana for five months. Never listened to the radio, never had time to do wow. any of that stuff. I turned the radio on, there were two songs that I heard. One was by the Stylistics, mm -hmm. Stop Look and Listen to right. Your Heart. Right. And mm -hmm. I heard Have You Seen Her. Wow. And those two songs. Wow. Who are these guys? <laughs> Who are the Shylights? Who are the Stylistics? Mm -hmm. And from then on, it's kind of like an addiction. It was in mm -hmm. my blood. Mm -hmm. And I had to hear everything that these groups put out because it was wow. smooth, beautiful soul. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got from you guys. Well, we had the sound. Carl Davis can hear them records. You know, I can, I can listen, <laughs> but Carl Davis can hear them. You know, he knew what was yeah. going all the way and what wasn't, see. And uh, he picked the right one, you know. He so the right so one. after you have Old Girl, mm -hmm. which that was such a big hit, and they played it where I was in the Army in Hawaii. They played that thing <laughs> constantly. Mm -hmm. And then it dropped off the stations. Mm -hmm. And then about August of 73, I heard a sound. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I write a letter to myself. Somebody's going to write a letter to himself because his girl is gone. And he's going to smear it with her favorite scent. And he's going to go all the places they used to go, and he's going to pretend like she's there, order dinner for two. What's this guy talking about? <laughs> but see, we in the Army were waiting for letters from home. And after a while, our letters started dropping off. And, and we'd eh, get letters seldomly. Okay. Wow. And now these guys are singing the same thing we're thinking. I'll have to write a letter to myself. Well, that's okay. <laughs> That'll work. And I heard your next big hit, write a letter to myself. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? I tell you, before that, I'm gonna tell you why old girl went so big, big, big. After we had it out on Flip Wilson with no strings, we went in back in the studio and we added the strings to it. And when that came out from the album, because the album was already number one, Give More Power to the People album, it went, it went straight to number one. But it was already on the album. It was already, at, yes, it was it on went, the album. It went straight to number one. So we had number one album, uh, Power to the People album, number one album, Lonely Man album, then number one old girl single, and number one old girl, I mean, number one Have You Seen a single. So we had four number ones in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Uh -huh. And they started releasing different songs off of the, the albums, and we worked, came up with that writer letter to myself. It's how, shot. how did that happen? Well, Gene was, uh, we was in, I think we was in uh, St. Croix, and Gene was sitting there writing a letter to him, <laughs> and he was going to mail it to Barbara, because they was kind of at, at each other. And he said, oh, no, I'm going to keep it to myself. And he, he, put it, and he came back, he said, Marsh, I got a new song. Man. Oh, no. I write a letter to myself. I said, you crazy. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> but look what happened. Yeah, another big record. You know, we just... On and on and on, Toby, uh, you know, coldest day of my life. I mean, this Marshall, we're in your dressing room, and as usual, you've got another concert coming up, which is what you do every week. Mm -hmm. You even had one last night. <laughs> You're on the road like, like you were back when you were... Um, wow, that is really something. And we're getting a standing ovation. That's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, well really people, people appreciate... I always say that always good music is the kind of music you listen to, but great music is the music you feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel, oh girl, mm -hmm. I feel, have you seen her? And I feel a letter to myself. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, buddy, you take me back, the emotions you take me back so so far and, and so deeply into that era. I gotta fight the tears back because <laughs> I'm telling you, life was so different back then. Right. Everybody that I knew, all my friends, all my family, everybody that I loved was alive back then. Wow. Life has changed so much, you know, right. uh, your family, the cycle of life moves on. Well, you know? a great part of our show is when we sing Coldest Day of My Life and I got all the lights out in the auditorium and they got everybody's cell phone. Right yeah. on. That's a great, you'll see it today. Can we come out and see you? You come on out there at the concert tonight, you'll see it. Can I bring all my friends? Bring all your friends. <laughs> okay, out Marshall. We're going to have a ball. We're gonna, all right, buddy. We're going to sing all the hits. I'm going to be waiting for them. Right, I'll right. see you on stage in a see few minutes. Out. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Thank you.